Hey VC, it's Brendan back for, uh, well you know it's been about a month so it's time for my recent finds. These are for the month of May. Um, it's now June. I hope everyone had a really great month of May. I know I sure did. Um, got a really good, some really quality stuff this month is, um, is what I'll say. Uh, for those of you that already watched my 45 collection videos, um, in part two of that one, I showed off some recent finds of, uh, you know, just like generic sleeve 45s. Um, so if you're interested in that, go check that out. It's part two, and I think they're at the very end. Um, other than that, I'll just I'll just get right into these. Um, two more 45s. These are both uh, newer picture sleeves. The first one here is the record store day release from Fleet Foxes. Um, it's the crack up coral version um, and a Bee Gees cover in the morning live in Switzerland. Um, as you can probably see, uh, my copy got a little bent in the mail. Uh, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, that's um, I posted a photo of, uh, of the mailer just crammed into the mailbox. Um, a little disappointing. I was able to flatten the record mostly. Um, it still has a slight, a slight wobble, but it's playable. It was pretty bad before. Um, I don't know if you can, you can tell it's a little warped still. Definitely playable, really simple labels though, and none such. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with this release. Um, wasn't able to make it out for Record Store Day, but I, I you know, ordered this online. Um, it was cheap, shipping was good, you know, had to pick it up because I love Fleet Foxes, and I would say that their record crack up was probably my favorite of 2017. And this is one I've actually been wanting for a long time. It's the Radiohead. Burn the Witch slash Spectre seven is single. See a different artwork on each side. Um, this came out ahead of uh, their newest album, Moonshape Pool, and it was very limited. And I was not able to grab one. And then, you know, the aftermarket price just shot straight up. Normal black vinyl. Um, just the cover art is on the labels. Uh, you can see the black vinyl there. And. Um, this finally has started to come back down to earth in price. You know, I'm not I'm not paying seventy dollars for a for a seven inch. I'll pay, you know, I think I got this for twenty plus shipping, which is a little back. It's back down to earth. I, I don't think these were that expensive when they came out, but still, that's not unreasonable for something so limited. Um, and fun fact about the song Spectre, if you don't know, um, apparently they were. In consideration to do the the theme song for the newest James Bond film Spectre and they turned in that demo and got it rejected and so they just released it for free one Christmas um, really cool song so two 12 inch singles here uh, this first one is by the Stone Roses it's called One Love and the B-side has Something's Burning and a One Love 7 inch version um, this one's from 1990 on Silvertone, and it's a non-album single and non-album B-side, so you know I need it for the Stone Roses collection. Um, Stone Roses, you know, just really solid um, late '80s alternative Brit rock, whatever you want to call it, Smiths esque, I guess. Um, and this one I've also needed for a while. It's just a copy of Blue Monday by New Order. It's on the uh, you know, it's the floppy disk die cut version that I used to see all the time. I don't really see these that often anymore. Uh, there is a version that has a black inner sleeve instead of a silver one. I think the black one is the first pressing, so this is a second pressing. Um, but you know, it's on factory. And uh, uh, Blue Monday is a super popular song. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is the highest selling 12 inch single of all time. Um, and Factory Records actually lost money with each copy of this sold because of the die cut uh, system, which was not very common at the time. And um, they just they just printed these at a loss, basically. Uh, speaking of New Order, I grabbed a copy of Substance, or I should say, my girlfriend grabbed me a copy of Substance uh, from work. If uh, if you ever go to a Half Price Books and you suspect that. Uh, you know, all the employees are hoarding the good stuff. That is, that is kind of true. I'd always kind of suspected that, but uh, you know, luckily sometimes I get some of that stuff. This, this being one of them. As you can see, this was previously owned by Ripley. I kind of did my best job of getting 
the name off of the pure white cover, so it is best as I could. It's still there a little bit, and then I think there's a little bit of writing on the labels. But this is a this is a two disc um, compilation of singles from New Order, and um, it's it's basically if you never listen to New Order, just you know find Substance on YouTube, uh, track one Ceremony, just start there, and just just go straight through because you'll kind of it's it's a great introduction point and it's a little bit of a greatest hits. Uh, pretty standard fare here with the Pixies uh, Doolittle. This is a, a modern 180 gram pressing. Uh, I think they're on 4 AD. Or am I wrong? Probably wrong. Uh, anyways, this is uh, you know the Pixies are so great. I I would say that they're criminally underrated. Um, even though this record is super popular, um, all their other albums are are fantastic. Um, they're kind of they're kind of known for the track "Where Is My Mind," and I guess "Here Comes Your Man" and probably "The Pacer" to an extent. But like, they're they're just so good. Um, I I don't feel it. I don't know why I feel the need to sell the Pixies to you guys, but the Pixies are are just fantastic. I've been I've been getting into them a lot more lately. Um, I would say they're kind of uh, on the same level. of Never mind. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, next up here is uh, one I've been needing for a long time. It's Devo's "Are We Not Men?" Um, answer: We are Devo. Um, don't know what to say about this one. I mean, uh, this was a record that kind of helped me get into some weirder music because um, you know Devo Devo's kind of weird. They're a little out there. They're still heavily um, on the punk side of things and the new wave um, sort of vibe. Uh, similar to like something like Talking Heads, something like that, but um, Devo, they're unique for sure. Um, they're quirky and they're funny and um, you know, they, they wear those weird hats and, and they're just kind of iconic. Um, but yeah, this is their first record, and I just I've just always needed this. I remember passing up a copy. Um, gosh, how long ago was that now? Probably like six or seven years ago. Uh, I remember seeing it for ten dollars, which I thought was high at the time. And this is only the second copy I've ever seen used. Um, I paid twenty two for this, so yeah, I, I I wish I bought that ten dollar copy years ago, but I didn't. Okay, a new one here. This is the new Courtney Barnett album, uh, Tell Me How You Really Feel. Um, I don't think this was pressed on black vinyl ever. Um, it's just, you know, translucent red, matches the artwork very well. This is the US pressing on Mom and Pop. Um, she's Australian. If you don't know her already, Courtney Barnett, uh, she last year just came out with a collaboration album with Kurt Vile. She has a record from 2015. 15, I want to say, called Sometimes I Sit, Sometimes I, wait, Sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit, and then she has, you know, some EPs and singles before that, but um, this is her newest one. I don't want to use the word disappointed, because I'm not, I'm not disappointed in this album. Um, uh, I think I, I had just set my expectations too high. I don't know, I feel like it's a very safe album, um, getting into the more generic side of things. I feel like she doesn't have as much as of her um, her writing style, doesn't really shine through as much, her, her unique writing style, um, sort of rambling. She she just, um, it's a lot more straightforward is what I'll say. Um, a lot more pop. Have you opened the gatefold yet? Super reflective gatefold with all the lyrics. You can see my setup there. Um, yeah, so, I'm, I feel like I'm being hard on this. It's a good album, but again, I feel like it's it's good but not great. If that makes sense. Um, another Australian one, I believe. This was a recommendation from Dean at Grandma's Handbag. He, I don't remember what the contest entry was from. Uh, I think it was for for Back to the Vinyls contest entry. Dean made a video about some local groups, um, and I picked up this one by Purpling. 
this is available on their Bandcamp. This is a, a new repressing of their 2004 uh, self-titled album. Uh, gatefold, you know, black vinyl, standard fare, but it's just such a fantastic album. It's, it's kind of jangly. It's a little post-rocky sometimes. It's, uh, it's super awesome. If you've never heard it, check it out on Bandcamp, or there's probably some tracks on YouTube. Um, you can see the track list there. I would, I would recommend the songs like Love Western, um, Second Shift, The Battler, Lionheart, I mean, you can't really go wrong with any of these songs. It's like American football, jangle, pop meets like, um, Explosion in the Sky or something, something along those lines, maybe Mogwai, I don't know, uh, it's just super fantastic. Oh, this was, uh, the recording engineer was Steve Albini. For those of you in the know, that's all I'll say. Okay, so I always talk about Vintage Freak nearby me. I brought in a good amount of stuff to trade, as I as I like to do, you know, just um, just to help out, just get get them some good stock of stuff that I don't listen to. Um, and so I guess I'll show this first. I got a pair, a used pair of vintage headphones. Um, I don't know much about headphones or really audio equipment in general. I know these are not amazing. They sound fine to, to my ears and with my setup. They're realistic Nova 40s, um, you know, just giant cans. They're actually pretty heavy um, for, uh, you know, for headphones, but um, yeah, not bad. These were uh, a good value and they weren't expensive either and especially not since I traded a bunch of stuff. So I'll show all the stuff I got there real quick. Hang on. Okay, these are the records I got there. Um, I'll show these two together. Yeah, I mean, come on. Everybody needs everybody needs these two. I never had this one before, the self-titled from Sabbath. I, I had a copy of this. This is an upgrade for me. You can see the cover's pretty nice. It has a slight warp, um, Paranoid does, but uh, I'll go ahead and pull it out. It's not not bad at all. It's just like a, a very slight thing, if you could even see it at all. And it's that kind of, you know, early 70s, like flexible vinyl. You see the original uh, green Warner labels. I do love this gatefold on Paranoid. It's just a classic, um, band photo, but I feel like it kind of, you know, set the stage for, for what, lots of band photos to come. Uh, they just look so cool, you know. Um, I do think this has horrible album artwork. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that, but um, it's horrible and yet yeah, still iconic at the same time. And then uh, I think this one's actually much better in terms of artwork. It's very creepy, definitely creeps me out if I, if I look too closely. At that lady there, she looks like a like a witch or something, you know. Um, but I never really listened to this album that closely, um, as close as, as I had to Paranoid. Uh, it's good, you know. <laughs> Not that I'm saying anything new here, but uh, who knew that Black Sabbath was so good? Uh, again, with you know, just original uh, Green Warner label. Um, this is just one that I. I've been wanting slash needing. And you can see beautiful cover. There's like no or hardly any ring wear at all and the, the vinyl is like VG plus or better on both of those. We're really happy to find those. Um, okay, so this one is the only one here that I have in the in the sleeve because I want to show how I've been packaging it. But it's the famous uh, zipper cover for uh, Sticky Fingers by Rolling Stones. Um, here, I'll take it out of the sleeve. And remove the bubble wrap so you can see the zipper. You can see the, the zipper is there. It moves up and down. It's got the um, the inner, uh, you can see the like the torso and underwear and everything. Um, really, really minty copy of this. They had this behind the counter in a box. I had to ask to, to see if they had any kind of collectible stuff. And this is the cleanest copy of this I've ever seen. Again, I used to see these all the time. Um, not ever in this good condition, so I'm glad to have this one, but, uh, yeah, I could have had one before for cheaper. I've just wanted, I've been wanting any copy of this, 
um, any any good playing copy. I didn't even necessarily want the zipper cover, but um, you know the opportunity arose to buy this, and um, I hopped on it. And uh, so those of you that have this, I want, I'm interested to see how you guys store this. From everything I've read online, I know you're supposed to keep the zipper like halfway down to prevent scratching the record. Um, because there it only affects the label, which I don't care about. And then whenever I have this in the sleeve, I keep this piece of bubble wrap here to uh, prevent the zipper from scratching the jackets of other records. And um, it, is, it does leave a little bit of an awkward gap on the shelf, but um, I think it's a small price to pay for uh, protecting my records, you know. So let me guys know what you what you think about the way I store it, if there's some other way you guys do it. Uh, okay, so this one's really cool. It's, uh, those, I bet a lot of you saw my video from Vintage Freak where I just kind of dug through the new arrivals. I'll probably do more videos similar to that, probably there and probably at like some of the other local stores around me, yeah, just through the new arrivals and stuff like that. Um, but this one was in there in the, in the collectibles section of the new arrivals and then I went back to get it and it was gone so I thought someone else had bought it and then uh, as I was looking through the box that I was buying the counter they had this in there as well as sticky fingers um, I was really really happy to see this because uh, Andrew recommended this to me after seeing my video he said that's a great album he's looking for a copy um, he's looking for a really minty copy though and uh, you know the cover on this one's got some major issues the record plays nicer than I thought it would. Um, I would go so far as to say it looked like a G, plays like a VG to VG+. Plus. Um, it's, I, was, I, was, I don't know why I've been holding off on showing this. It's Heavy Sounds by Elvin Jones and Richard Davis. Great gatefold, you know, great liner notes. Um, fantastic record. If you like Elvin Jones drumming, he's he's just a great drummer. I wish I had this to show in um, Andre's smoking hot contest because look at all that smoke on the cover. It's crazy. Um, and you can see a little bit of the cover damage that was, I don't even know how they fixed this, but it's like they fixed it with like tape or laminate or something. So there's a very serious um, gash like on the spine. Uh, and this wasn't, you know, I pointed it up a little bit for this. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly how much, but it um, it's a good deal for compared to how much they go for online. It's uh, first pressing on the ABC Impulse label. You can see there. Um, you're not going to be able to see condition too well, but you know, it's got a, it's got a few marks, um, but it it plays very well. You can see a mark right there by the light. Um, minor, minor pops and ticks. I might have to figure out some way to like upload this to share with Andrew to uh, to see how he would grade it. Because while I like while I like the record, he seems to um, have been on the hunt for this one for a long time. And if it's uh, Andrew, if this ends up being within reasonable uh, um, condition for you let me know and uh, we can surely like surely pass this one on to you um, yes yeah, so that's it from vintage freak I got a couple more here these two are both from uh, forever young records whose pricing is a little iffy sometimes I'll admit it. they're they're kind of pricey um, on a lot of things but there are good deals to be found such as I got this copy, mono copy of the electric electric prunes underground. Um, mono, I've already mentioned that it's on the reprise label. You can see that awesome tricolor steamboat label. Um, obviously, psychedelic garage. This is their second album, I believe, and it's uh, probably my favorite of theirs that I've heard at least, and um, I think this is the only, or it's the second record that the actual original group made that was originally 
like they're under their creative control before they got uh, kind of you know taken up by uh, David Axelrod to do projects for him and um, you know those of you that know better than I do let me know about this group I mean I like this record it's awesome I really love to find their first one I have a 45 if I had too much to dream last night but uh, that's about it that I've got for this group I've also got Mass and F minor which is one of the Axel Rod projects but um, yeah fantastic record I'm always looking for psychedelic stuff and that's just a classic I've been needing see it on lists all the time and I got this cool German pressing or German copy original of the West Coast pop art experimental band part one again on the uh, tricolor reprise label but uh, Germans you can see the German publishing mark there um, again this one has has some marks and stuff so I think it was marked for condition play super well um, that's just the kind of thing you never know until you, you can take it home and play it um, so I made an Instagram post about this one lately um, I heard the song I mean I've always wanted the record I had not listened to it all the way through ever before and I knew their cover of Help I'm a Rock I knew Shifting Sands and that might be it and I obviously I love two and three from this group and um, I heard the song I Won't Hurt You used in the new Wes Anderson movie Isle of Dogs it's kind of used several times and um, you know we waited through till after the credits to see who that band was West Coast Pop Art Experimental Band really nice choice Wes Anderson um, so yeah I needed a copy of this as soon as I could find one and uh, got a good deal on this and this one, okay, I'll admit, I kind of blew my budget on this one. I'm probably not going to be able buying that many records this next month because of this one, but it's just so nice, and it was such a good deal, I could not pass it up. It's My Bloody Valentine's first album, Isn't Anything, original UK pressing, um, with the 7-inch, which I'll go ahead and pull that out right now. Yeah, here it is. see it's uh it's got this 45 of instrumentals unreleased instrumentals and um the instrumental b is really cool it's kind of trip hoppy it's got like a hip-hop beat and you know shoegazy guitar and it's it's just really cool i'll check out that instrumental if you've never heard it i think this sticker was originally on the cover because there was kind of a mark on the cover in the shape of that sticker um, you're not going to be able to see it, but it, it should go like right there. I'm not going to attempt to peel it off or anything. Anyway, you can see Black Creation Label, um, original UK, all that. Great condition. And fantastic record. I, I would obviously love to get an original copy of Loveless. I have the new, the brand new 2018 reissue of that. That they just put out and I was considering getting one of these but then I saw someone post this for sale at a great price and um, I had to get it I just had to hop on that I, I've heard that the reissue is arguably superior um, collection sake I, I need this so um, yeah I'm really happy with this this purchase and I would consider it one of the jewels of my collection now um, so I guess that's everything. Um, it seems like a like not that much, but I, I think I buy. Um, lately, I've kind of been going for quality over quantity. Um, so yeah, let me guys know what you think. Um, just just want to say thank you guys for watching, continuing to watch and comment. I know I'm not the best about responding to comments all the time, um, but you know I just want to thank like Danny and um, Dean and Andrew and uh, uh, Rob from Boston. Um, oh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Tone. Thank you, Tone, for watching as always. Um, Jay, all you guys, thank you so much. Chris. And... Um, some of you that, that watch and maybe have never commented before, leave a comment, you know. I'd love to get you know you guys, and um, 
love to find new channels to be watching because I, I still watch a lot of videos. I just um, sometimes I feel like I'm falling behind on my own videos. So um, yeah, that's it for for this week. Really appreciate it as I've already mentioned, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.